Great Bar Primary School, Birmingham, a school in the process of thinking again about its approach to teaching and learning in maths. Enquiry-based, independent learning since early years has raised these Key Stage 1 children's expectations that maths should be fun and that they have ownership of the activities. The big question, can this approach fulfil national curriculum objectives at the end of the key stage? And where do you start to plan for these more independent mathematicians? Everything that we do now in year one, this has been a process that's probably been going on now for two years. So the environment is very important and the way that the environment is set up. And I think if you make that move from a more traditional, everybody sitting down working, to that environment where there's more practical things going on. And what's important, I feel, is then the children become used to working independently, doing practical activities. Every year we have um, a transition meeting with the previous um, teachers so that they can pass over to us records and any information, any particular information regarding certain children so that we know exactly where they're starting from. Well done. OK, somebody else who used a different strategy. Thomas. We use the number line. What right. I done, um, I done my number line. Okay. So it's quite a rigorous process where you know, we're in constant communication, so we know exactly where to start pitching our teaching from. So we need to make sure that when they come to us, we're hitting it right at their level and we're not backtracking at all. What's that the answer? Can you show me your whiteboard, please? And they're hitting hard, with problem solving immediately promoted to be the focus of this term's learning to fulfil the mantra of the revised framework for maths, underpinned by the basics like number line work. But it's not just the revised framework that they're coming to terms with. There's also the new curriculum based on universal skills. So with this much change, how do they keep control of the process? There's a familiar feel to the start of each session with a skills input that's often active, refreshing the children's current knowledge. Ikram, let's have 10 less than 12. Brilliant. And Lauren, 10 more than 6. 10 more than 6, what do we think? Throw it back if you're not sure. And let's see if you can help you. Chloe, can you help her? 16, fabulous. Let's have Rebecca, 10 more than three. 13. Excellent. Let's the idea behind today's yeah. lesson is, is building on what we've done over the past um, few weeks. We've done work on adding in tens and adding all in ones as well at the start of the year and still for those children who are struggling a little bit, they're still working on adding in one more and one less. Rebecca, Chloe, Phoebe and Gavin, would you like to come? Within the whole class session, it's very difficult <coughs> to um, address every single child individually, but you, you do as well as you can in terms of having a higher achieving level and for those children who aren't quite at that level. How much would the teddy bear and the dragon cost all together? I'm going to give you one minute to sit down and to have a chat and to think about what you're going to have to do to find out the answer. Yeah. What are you going to yeah. do? Jump on a number line. With the paired talking, um, it's something that we did in literacy quite a lot before, and I think the idea of using it in maths is, is very important because it actually gives those children who maybe aren't so confident an opportunity to talk to children who've got that language skill, children who've got the knowledge with their maths, and they can actually bounce off each other, if you like, to come up with answers and to give each other ideas. But Key Stage 1 knew there was only so far pupils could develop these ideas in a large group. So the balance of Mike's lessons remained towards child-initiated activities, designed to meet their individual maths needs. Within every activity that we do, um, even the child-initiated ones, we have to try and think, well, that'll be OK for certain groups, but how can we make it a little bit more challenging for others? So it, it, it is a lot in the planning, but it, it does work really well because it means that each child, when they go to any activity, has that opportunity to learn from it. All very well in year one, you might say. 
But Sarah is sticking with the whole school philosophy in year two. The starting point is still what they believe to be the focus of all learning, a set of universal skills of which problem solving is just one. Right. OK. Red group, I'd like you to add these numbers together for me, please. And I'd like the rest of you to look at these numbers. Laura and Samantha, I'd like you to have a go at using the number line method this time, OK? So Sarah's encouraging a differentiated response up front, and the children are clearly prepared for their own challenges. If we, if we add 64 and a big number 10, that takes us to 74. I think it's very important that the children have that time to share ideas and to talk to each other. Um, it, it's, it is very easy just to tell them this is how we're going to do it, but unless they have that time to consolidate their own thoughts and have some time to ask you questions, it, it doesn't really reinforce the skills that you're trying to teach. What we tend to do is we look at the skills that the children are developing during our main teaching session and then we make sure that the activities the children go to are all relating to those so that they're developing them and consolidating what they've already learned. We're constantly looking at where the children are at at the moment and where they need to move to. Let's all do that on our number line. 23, add 10 more and let's see what we get. I think is we do seven jumps because we're using number lines. So it's seven at three equals ten. Seventeen at three equals twenty. So thirty-three at seven must equal forty. The group that were with me were consolidating and I was teaching them the next strategies to develop that and the children that were at the table were actually working on the skills that they've been taught already. They were developing their knowledge of tens and units and actually ways in which they could use that to find the answers. So add two, two jumps of ten, so that would be two hundred and seventy-five. And do another jump of ten. I'm doing it. Oh, no, sorry. So we've gone back too far. It might not be the right answer, I'm not sure. 265, but it's not going to be 280. So it takes a while to reach the right answer. But these independent mathematicians are much more involved, and Sarah's finding that she can build on this. It's very easy to give them um, a list of sums where they, they, they very quickly understand what, what you want from them and they can quite quickly go through that process. We think it's very important that the children talk, again, to consolidate their learning really and to push their learning forward. Um, they, learn, they learn from each other and again, if they come up against any problems, they've got methods and ways forward to overcome them. And that's the crux of their new philosophy, an insistence that the children inquire and think. And that's meant going back to basics with their definition of what the teacher's role is during maths. I mean, generally, um, we would have myself as a class teacher and a teaching assistant who would be working with another group. And then we have what we have, two independent groups that actually goes and chooses from the child-initiated activities.
Now, in terms of the amount of adults, we do very often get in students who are from Sutton College, which is really useful because it means that we can plan those into our lessons. Three. So we're going to put three on one hand. We all got three? Yeah. And we're going to put three on the other hand. But then we've got one more, so if we add one more to one of our hands, Seven. should we count them all together? One, one two, two, three, four, five, five six, six, seven. seven. So she scored seven all together. So who do you think won that one? Seven. Right, look, number seven underneath your name. Wow, done. The extra adults have been very helpful to model at the start of the problem-solving focus. But soon their role will change, and they anticipate monitoring the activities rather than facilitating them. Each child actually has their own um, set of objectives in their book. OK, we're going to have a look at our targets in our books, OK? I can count on and back in ones from any small number and in tens from and back to zero. What do we think? Thumbs up? Not sure. Or, hmm, what do you think? What do you think? Yeah, I think I know that you can all do that. Well done. Now, what we're going to do today, OK, we are going to practice... Even though they're in a group, they still have their own individual objectives that they're trying to meet and that they actually look at um, sometimes and say, right, can I do that? No, I need to work on that. These objectives are promoting personalised learning. The children are still playing, but within a highly structured environment that's challenging each of them. Over time, the activities should produce the evidence teachers will need for assessment at the end of Key Stage 1. With the higher ability group today, the main focus was to push them that little bit further and see whether they could relate it to giving change. Um, we, we can see from their, um, the, the sheets that they've filled in that some of the problems lie with giving change. Our next step would be to have a look at any difficulties or any problems that we highlighted through these sessions. And then we'd make sure that in our, our next planning that we're catering for those who are actually hitting our planning exactly at where the children's learning is at now so that we're carrying them forward, always challenging them, always reinforcing and building on what they already know. So there's a cycle of independent enquiry-based activity leading to assessment, leading to planning for individuals. The signs are that despite the children entering school below the national average, they'll be at the national average at the end of Key Stage 1. And Great Bar's ready to take this independent learning through to Key Stage 2. Only time will tell whether their value added will improve. <laughs>